If you've spent any time in Waimea Town, this residence should look familiar. It's Anna's Ranch, belonging to Anna Lindsay Perry Fisk. Though she is no longer with us, she leaves a legacy that remains in the hearts and minds of those who knew her. She lived her early years in Hilo. Her mom was a school teacher who taught her how to needle point, while her dad taught her how to be a cowboy. And in fact, she did consider herself one of the guys. She never called herself a cowgirl. She called herself a cowboy. And she said, I can ride and rope as good as any man. And according to the cowboys, that was absolutely true. She lived in Hilo for 20 years. She became their parks commissioner. She was a successful businesswoman, but her marriage was frowned upon. She was uh, Caucasian and Hawaiian, but her first husband was Chinese Hawaiian. And in those days, Hilo society kind of rejected them because of that. And so um, to her dying day, whenever she had a party or something, if uh, you couldn't come, you better have a darn good reason. Um, because she, she just didn't like rejection. She's often misunderstood. You, you have people who think she was, she was kind of a hard woman. Her father died in 1939, and she took over this ranch in Waimea, learning all she had to, to become a success in a man's world. She built up this sort of personality, I, I think, because of this dichotomy of who she was. And then she uh, took that to her, you know, to her life as far as her business went. Um, so she introduced uh, Brahmas to Hawaii, and she introduced the Char Bray, which is the Brahma Charlet mix. And she uh, developed new pasture uh, maintenance techniques. An innovator, a rancher, and a generous community supporter. Beyond being a fundraiser for the American Heart Association and Easter Seals, she also had this other side where she was just given a little money here and a little money there to, to help people out and very, very generous to her own family in particular. She died at age 95 in 1995 and left the ranch as her legacy to the people of Waimea, which today is on the State Historical Homes Registry. The main part of this home was built by her parents. Um, it's a large home, but it's a very typical Waimea home. In um, The interior is uh, eclectic at best. We've got pieces from all different time periods. We, a lot of our Koa furniture we know goes back to her parents' era, possibly even her grandparents. Uh, it was Anna's great-great-grandfather that started the first sawmill in the area, so he um, actually cut Koa planks. It's, it's sort of a mishmash. She's got some elegant pieces next to some kind of, uh, you know, craftsman, very functional pieces. And uh, she wasn't a, a huge art collector as far as paintings and sculpture, but we do have a couple of very, very fine pieces. And um, most of, I think, the, the value in the interior is the, the native hardwoods. Here, in her own words, Anna speaks of her deep faith. I would pray and ask God to help me. And I had a feeling, I'm going to make this. And I enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed doing it. And before you know it, I was out of debt, and I started making money. She was the first female Grand Marshal of the Aloha Week Parade, something as small as that, or her taking uh, pa'u riding, the Hawaiian women's equestrian activities, to, to the Rose Bowl Parade, to the Calgary Stampede. You know, she was sort of spreading um, you know, Hawaiian equestrian culture. It's a story of determination, innovation, perseverance, and good old-fashioned hard work. Her accolades and awards were well-deserved, and her story is one that should be preserved. To learn more about this remarkable woman simply known as Auntie Anna, visit her historic home in Waimea.